have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Psalms, Psalms chapter 23, scripture reading this afternoon. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sometimes when, um, when, when you're under stressful situations and you just remember God's goodness and God's glory and all you want to do is just praise Him. And this song came to me this week and I just want to give God the glory today. Uh, if you know the song, please sing along. Praise is what I do.
Amen. We thank God for this beautiful Sunday that we are here, able to be in the house of the Lord, giving praise, Amen. praising and eating. And that's what we're going to talk about today, spiritual fullness, being able to fill, become filled with the word of God, with music, with testimonies. All of these things are so important. And today we're going to talk about the overflowing cup, our overflowing cup. Those of us, some of us here might have a cup that is filled and overflowing. I can say for myself, my cup is overflowing today. Some of us might not even have a cup. Some of us, our cups might be dry. So we're going to learn today about the overflowing cup, how we can fill our cups, the instructions that we're giving, given in the word. And we're going to start in Psalms chapter 23. Verse 5, we'll understand what this overflowing cup is and what it should be filled with, how we can fill our cups. Psalms chapter 23 and verse 5, David says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Amen. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemy, my cup runneth over. So we're going to talk about this table that God has prepared for all of us and the <coughs> cup that can, for those of us that understand how to fill our cups, how to eat at this spiritual table, that can run over. So just like we have to physically eat food every day to stay alive, not only stay alive, but to become healthy, and continue to grow we have to spiritually eat food and we should do that every day to the same thing to stay alive to become healthy and to continue to grow and today we're going to look at a few things that are on our spiritual table that we are invited to become full of and we actually we are commanded to become full of and i want you to ask yourself the question is today did I or do I eat until I am full? Do I get everything I can, everything that God has for me? You can ask these questions for yourself right now because we are at church. We are at a table. We're going to talk about the meat. We're going to talk about the potatoes. We're going to talk about the not so popular vegetables. Sometimes we don't want the vegetables. I'm not going to eat that. I'm not going to do this. But vegetables play a very important part in us growing and becoming healthy, not only physically, but spiritually. There are some of us that are here at this spiritual table that came to eat. God has something for me today. And they plunged right into Sunday school. They didn't say, I didn't learn anything in Sunday school today, so don't ask me a question. They plunged right into Sunday school looking to absorb something and find something until they were full. And then with happy hearts, they came to church or into the tabernacle and they sang to the glory of God, fullness, loudly. 
And they continued eating by offering a testimony of praise and thanksgiving, which we heard. And now they're listening to the message intently so that they can get every crumb that is put on their plate. It says, thou preparest the table. It doesn't say that this is a buffet that we come and we, it says God prepares a table. I've got this for you in the message. I've got this for you in Sunday school. I've got this for you in the testimonies, listen. And I've got this for you in the song. But then there are others that came to church today and it was like something in their soul clicked off and they just really don't have an appetite. We know how that is, right? Sometimes we wake up, we might be saying, I just don't have appetite today. I don't even feel like going to church. And some people decided not to go to church today for whatever reason. And even if they came to church, they barely picked at their food. They picked at their Sunday school lesson. They always had a reason, they have a reason. Well, I, I just don't feel good or I'm not hungry. The piano player kept messing up. I'm not speaking about you, I'm just. The piano player was messing up, so I couldn't really sing the way I wanted to sing. I mean, I would have, but the testimonies were boring. You know, they say the same thing every single Sunday, so that was boring, so I didn't pay attention to that. So the message is probably going to be bad as well. So I'll just cover my nose and just wait till this is over. So they sit and they wait till it's over and then they go back to doing whatever they were doing before they come to church. Isn't that sad? Two people came to church, came to the same church. One left from the table filled to overflowing and the other left empty. If you're living a Christian life today, there is no excuse for you not eating from the bountiful table that is prepared for you. And after eating, growing spiritually, you'll grow for the next five or six days. You know, you'll eat tomorrow morning. You may eat tonight when you say your prayers and read your little scripture. There is no excuse that we are not growing as Christians. But just maybe, I said, maybe you don't know what's on the table. Maybe you don't know what God has for you. So today we're going to take a look at what God has prepared for you. We're going to go through five categories, the protein, the vegetables, the, the carbs, all of these things. And we're going to talk about them really quickly. But what we're going to talk about first is the fullness of God. That is going to be our protein, our meat, if you will. And we find that in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, and it reads, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians, not, Ephesians 3, 19, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Sometimes in life there are things that no matter how you describe them, one can never quite know or understand what it tastes like unless they taste it for themselves. The love of Christ is one of those things. This love which is offered to you free of charge, this is the first thing that God is going to put on your plate and pour on your plate when he says, thou preparest the table for me. The first thing that is on your plate is the love of God. Remember some time ago that we talked about the, the prodigal son and, and his son was gone and he was lost, but the father never stopped looking for him? This is barely the tip of love that I am trying to describe to you. And I, I can't. I can't describe to you the love of God besides saying that, you know, we just got through Easter. Christ died so that we can have this table, so that we can have all of these things for us but I can't describe it, you have to taste it for yourself. You have to get these things. You have to see God do miracles in your life and move people in and out of your life. You have to taste that for yourself to understand the fullness of God. It says to know the love of Christ, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. This is the kind of love that is so deep and so concerned for you that he knows how many hairs are on your head. We all know what it is to love ourselves, and we all love ourselves, first of all. But how many here, and just raise your hand, can tell me how many hairs are on your head this morning? Not really. 
you can't even guess. You probably couldn't even guess how many hairs are on your head this morning. But God loves you so much that he is keeping track of every hair that is on your hair. This simple fact alone speaks volumes to how much the fullness of God, knowing the love of Christ, is to your plate. If you try this, the love that passes all understanding, you can quickly become obsessed, as many others have, with God and his love, and you will come to his table again and again and again, and you will get down and pray, and you will get in your Bibles and you will study because you want to hear. God, tell me again how much you love me. Tell me again that I can do this. And by this, it may mean your business, your job, your life, your family. Tell me again. You become obsessed with that relationship with God. What are you doing? I just stopped by, right? But you can't know that unless you try it for yourself. When was the last time is the question that you tasted that kind of love and really let the juices of the love of God, how much he loves you, run down your chin? If it's been a while today, you can pull up a chair. There is an endless supply of that love, and there's nothing like having that meat first thing on your plate. We're going to move now to the potatoes, which is in John chapter 15, verse 11. Let's move to John chapter 15, verse 11. And this is, we just talked, number one, about the fullness of God. We understand that the fullness of God begins with love and his tremendous love for all of us. And now we're gonna to move to John 15, 11, and we're gonna talk about the fullness of joy. John chapter 15, verse 11, it says, these things have I spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Amen. I said before that this, we can kind of equivalent to the potatoes on the plate, and meat, for some reason, to me, just tastes better with potatoes or rice or just something else, right? If you've ever been on an Atkins diet, so that was old, but now the new thing is a keto, I think that's like protein, right? If, you, if you're on the keto diet or, or that kind of diet where it's high protein, you know exactly what I mean. And it may take a while for you to be just like the protein, the protein. Carbs make everything taste better. I'm just telling you, whether it's rice, potatoes, spaghetti, pasta, it does. But once you have the overflowing love of Christ in your life, it changes things. And the one thing that you will notice is that you will be filled with joy. And it's not just a, it's Christmas time, so I'm so happy. But it's a joy that is so overwhelming that it is something Again, that you have to feel for yourself. It is so overwhelming that as I can't even describe it. It's one of those things, again, Peter described it as a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Sometimes you're just walking around your house just with your hands raised up saying, thank you, God. I don't even know how you did this. I don't even know why you did this. I'm not worthy, but thank you. There is a joy in our lives. And it's almost like a side effect of the love of God that you just feasted on. We talked about the fullness of God, now we're talking about the love of God. When you have both of those together, the love of God, and now he's done something, he's given you your sanctification, he's filled you with the Holy Spirit, he's given you this job, but the joy that we get from the fullness of God is something that can't be described. It can make you feel like nothing in your life can go wrong, and when it does, as it will, you can still smile because you know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. Satan can steal a lot of things from you. He can steal a lot of things. He can steal your car. He can steal your home. He can try to steal your children. Amen? He can steal your health. He can. But he can't steal your joy. What God has, when he prepares that table for you, and he puts his love, the fullness of God, and he puts that joy on your plate, Satan cannot come and take that from you. He can take, as I said, your job, but he cannot take your joy. Now you can choose to get up from the table and say, I don't want this. 
because when God puts it on your plate, it's good for you. It's something that we should eat. Amen? Spiritual fullness can only happen when we eat and take on the things that Christ has for us. If you're running on low, if you're running low on joy today, you can go back and read the words from Jesus in John chapter 5, 1 through 10, and I won't read them all, but he talks about abiding in him and how he says, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Jesus, the Father loved Jesus so much that he sent him where? Down to earth, to the cross, to die for us. And Jesus said, and I love you that much. It doesn't mean that he's not going to send trouble into our lives. Absolutely, he will do it because he wants us to grow. Let's talk. As I said, let's keep going. These are, there are some promises here, things that we can get really excited about, thoughts and things that can bring you comfort, which is the fuel to feed your joy, even when you're going through a hard time. We are commanded, as I said before, to become full of these things. One is the fullness of God. We've gone through number two, the fullness of joy. And now let's look at the fullness of the spirit. We find that in Ephesians. We're still in Ephesians chapter five, verse 18. It's important that all of these things are on our plate. Some people only want to talk about love, 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 love. God is love, love, love. You don't love me. I don't love you. We don't love each other. Blah, blah, blah. God is not, God is love. But God wants us to have all of these things, all of these things on our plate, love, joy. And now we're going to look at the spirit. He wants us to be full of the spirit. And it says in Ephesians 5, 18, and be not drunk with wine within its excess, but be filled with the spirit. God has called us to be, he wants to, the last verse we read it, he said here, that your joy might be full. Before that, he said that we should be filled with all the fullness of God. And now he is telling us that we should be filled with the Spirit. When you receive Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. And the Holy Spirit makes it possible for every Christian to live a fulfilled and joyful life. If the Holy Spirit is living within you, Trust me, the Holy Spirit isn't walking around, my life sucks, everything is worse, everything happens. That's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living within you makes it possible to say, hey, I know this is happening in your life right now, but God said that all things happen for the good. You can find joy in this because when you're on the other side of this, no matter how dark this night is, you're going to be blessed. You're going to see what God had prepared for you on that table if you just drink this cup. Amen? The Holy Spirit leads with him leading and controlling your life, but you have to let him lead and control your life. And when you do, some of the advantages are, and I'm going to list these. I'm not going to read them, but you can write them down, go back, review, write them down. In Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, and our youth are going to be learning about this in a couple weeks, but it says, your life will show the fruit of the Spirit more and more. In James 5, verse 16, it says, your prayers will be more effective. When you are filled with the Spirit, your prayers will be more effective. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17 it says your understanding of the Bible will increase. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And, and we'll, we'll stop there for a minute. That's because when you're reading the Bible, guess who's sitting right there saying, this is what this means. And this is what it means for you in this situation. The Holy Spirit. So your understanding of the Bible will increase when you are filled. When you come to the table and you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, you will have greater power to witness. And I saw some things. Those of y'all know I just got back from Canada. Well, Sister Lebon has a track that is about her life. It's called pain or pain something through turn to praise. And we know her story. It's a tragic story, but 
it is ending in praise. And we at this church have ordered, you know, the track order went out. We'll pick them up at camp meeting. But I ordered a bunch of those for us because we know her. This is someone in the flesh that we can relate to. But on this trip, you know what was left at all the airport on the little tables that you're at the airport? Little tracks. You know what was handed to people? She said, me, handed to people and they were on the plane reading? The tracks. The Bible says in Acts 1, if the Holy Spirit, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will have greater power to witness. And I say this because we think, oh, Sister LeVon, she has a track, she's this. I can remember years ago when I was traveling with my dad and we went to wherever, we were promoting a project for the church and I went to her and I said, sister, I need you to come up and stand. She said, I don't do that. I don't talk in front of people. And I asked her, I said, you gotta at least introduce me. You got, I don't, I don't know these people. This is your church. And she was shaking like this. I kid you not, she was physically shaking because it wasn't something that she did. But when you are filled, when you come to the table and you say, I want the Holy Spirit, when you are filled, it says you will have greater power to witness. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says you will have God's power to defeat temptation and sin and to live a life of victory. This is critical. Without the Holy Spirit within you, you will not have the power to live a life of victory. And it's nice to have power even in our natural life. Power is one thing that's necessary for our firemen. Firemen have to have power or strength, right? It helps them to climb ladders and rescue people. But in our spiritual life, it helps us to stand up to Satan and the, the demons that he sends to try to bring you down, to tear you from the place that God has put you. You need power and you get it when the Holy Spirit is in you and you come to church and you go to Bible study and you get more and more and more, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's move to the fullness of blessings. And this one might say, oh, this is the vegetables because no one likes to talk about money, right? Ugh. We need money, but we don't want to talk about money. But the Bible says for fullness of blessing in Malachi, let's turn to Malachi 3 verse 10. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, and it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, there, that there might be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Remember the last time you received a blessing so big that you had to tell someone, and if you didn't tell someone... It felt like you might burst. You were feeling at that time the fullness of blessings. That's what it is, the fullness of blessings. Our Father, our Heavenly Father is loaded with blessings that he wants to give you. The problem is you can't get the blessing if you don't come to the table. Amen? We want to be strong without lifting weight. We want to be full without eating. You can't get the fullness of blessings if you don't come to the table. And you're going to have to eat your vegetables. You're going to have to pay your tithe, right? The Bible says here that it, these are instructions for this particular blessing. The love of God, he's just pouring it and pouring it and pouring it and pouring it. But this blessing, there are instructions. And it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there, be, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith. Why not prove him? Like, what do you have to lose? If you have room, if you need blessings, and you have a room to fill, there's no reason that you should not be paying your tithe and look to the Lord of hosts to prove that he will do as he has promised. Now, receiving blessings is not the only reason to pay tithe. We know that, but it's sure a good one. It's definitely a good reason. And giving is a simple principle in the Bible, and it goes beyond just paying tithe. Giving is a simple principle in the Bible that has tremendous side effects. And I don't know if you know this, but did you know that giving a dollar or paying for a stranger's cup of coffee will increase your happiness within seconds of that transaction or the action. 
within seconds, if you're feeling like nobody loves me, I'm the worst, things just don't, and you're at McDonald's because you're like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, how I say, like, I'm just gonna eat my feelings. That's me. Sometimes I'm like, I'm gonna eat my feelings, I'm gonna get nuggets and, and cheeseburger. I'm gonna eat my feelings. Well, you can eat your feelings, but if you pay for the person behind you, their food, immediately you will feel a difference. And you probably will say, you know what, I don't even really need to eat this. You might get to the window and be like, I really don't even need to eat this. Just give me a cup of water and maybe something dry. I don't know. I've never, I haven't done, I'm not there yet. But I, I do give. And it has a tremendous side effect. And the side effect is immediately, if you will try that, because the reason it happens is because you're giving to someone who can't do anything back for you. You cannot, you're not expecting anything in return. So if you do it for someone that's on the street or the car behind you, you don't know who these people are, right? And if is one of the instant cures for feeling sorry for yourself and itself is a blessing. I'm telling you, just try it. I do it. Try it and you will see instantly your attitude will change. But as we get kind of to the end here, so we've talked about the fullness of God. We know that that's love just poured onto our plate, poured onto our plate. We talked about the fullness of joy, how this is, this balances with the fullness of God. It's like the potatoes with the meat, it just makes everything so much better. Having that joy, even when things don't go right, when things aren't going right in our life, the importance of coming to the table and eating that joy and we talked about the fullness of the spirit, being filled with the spirit, the importance of it, how it increases our understanding of the Bible, how it gives us power for service or power to witness, right? And we've just talked about the fullness of blessing. This is the one thing that came with instructions, how we can practice it. And now, in closing, we want to talk about the fullness of wisdom. And we find this in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians chapter 1. And verse 9, and it reads, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease prayer for you, and to desire that ye, now listen, that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Knowing God's will for your life, and we're just bringing it to just individual. God died for everyone. God has joy for everyone. God has blessings available to those that will obey the instruction. God has the spirit is available to everyone. But here it comes down to you as an individual. The, the will of God for your life is important. It is vital to know what his will is for your life because that's the only way you can walk in it. We don't walk around all like, uh, just doing random stuff. If you know what the will of God is for your life, you can walk in that, and God wants us to be full of wisdom. He wants to show us. He wants to tell us. But if we get to the table and we decide, I'm not doing that, I'm not eating that, he can't show us. He can't tell us what his will is for our lives. And so we get up from the table, half empty, stumbling around. What am I going to do on Monday? How am I supposed to come back to the table? Come back to the table. Ask God for wisdom, it's free, and he wants you to be filled with wisdom. You know where you can find out what God's will is for your life? Right at this table or right at the foot of God in prayer. Many times we come down in prayer and we talk and talk and talk and God this, God that. Listen, let him talk to you. Where do you want me to go to college? What do you want me to do with this friend? Should I be friends with this person? Listen, God wants to fill you with all this knowledge, and it's about you personally, Vashti. He wants to just talk to you about you. He's not talking to you about Rebecca. Vashti, this is what I want you to do. This outfit is cute on you. I like the way this looks on you. God wants to talk to you about you. We can be filled with that wisdom and understanding if we would just listen. He wants you to know what his will for your life is. He wants you to be filled with that information so that any moment, at any moment when he asks you, I need you to go here, that you don't hesitate. You know exactly what God wants for you 
and what he wants you to be doing. And I pray today that all of us are doing it right now. If you don't have knowledge of God's will for your life today, if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, if things aren't working out for you the way you planned your life, then maybe you should go back and ask God, God, I need this fullness of wisdom. I, I need to come to the table. I need to eat and be filled. I'll say, as the songwriter said in, in closing, come and dine. Paul wrote to the church in Colossians. He says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you. Don't fret today if you don't feel, feel, if you do not feel filled with all of these things that God has shown us today, there is someone that is praying for you, praying that you will be filled, yes. and that someone is Jesus Christ himself. Knowing that God wants you to be filled is one thing, but to take in these things, to come to this table and eat, that's on you. That's on you. Many people, especially a lot of you children, not just you here, you come to the table and you go to sleep. You come to the table and you go to play. But today as we close, I will ask the same question. We review our Christian walk with God. Can I be more filled? You might be filled, but the question is, are you filled to overflowing? That's what the Bible says, that we can be filled to overflowing. And the answer that God, when we ask God, can I be filled to overflowing? The answer will always be yes, because as long as you're here on earth, there is something that you can spiritually learn. Yeah. Just as in natural life, we are still learning and growing even at 90, we can be spiritually learning and we can become spiritually filled to overflowing. Yeah. We're going to stand and sing our song on, of invitation on page 498, Fill Me Now. Let's listen to the words of these songs. We're going to sing just verse 1, 498, and then it's up to you. Whether you leave this church today feeling empty or whether you leave this church feeling full. Let's stand. And sing page 
shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and it shall be open. As we come before you, we ask that you will do these three things. We ask these things with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, my name is Rebecca Ash and welcome to the Apostolic Faith Key West channel. We are a traditional Bible-believing church and here you can worship God through music, be encouraged by victorious testimonies, and hear practical, relevant Bible-based sermons. If you want to be uplifted and inspired, then watch any of the videos on our channel. We are located right here in Key West, Florida at 720 Southern Street and you can find our live or the time for our live services right here in the links below. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with a friend. We look forward to seeing you soon.